Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I've got a fun video. We are tiling the floor of our custom shower. I recently saw this YouTube short or TikTok that highlighted a cool way of making a template using wooden sticks like these. I used my table saw to rip a 2x4 into 8th inch thick strips, but you could also use yardsticks like these from Lowe's or Home Depot. The idea is to hot glue these strips of wood around the perimeter of your shower walls to mark their exact shape. I'm also marking the location of the drain with this template, which I think should help considering it's off center a little bit. And now we can take this to our tile. The tile that I'm using is this pebble or stone mosaic. I like it a lot. I'll leave a link to it down in the description, along with all of the other tools, materials, and supplies I used. After I got all of my pieces laid out, I then put my template on top and I used a permanent marker to mark the outline, along with the drain. To get the look I'm going for, I'm not using any spacers between my tile sheets, but if you're gonna use some, make sure they're installed during this step. And now it's time to cut our first piece. And there's a lot of different ways to cut tile, but for the majority of these pieces, I'll be using my tile saw with a sliding table. Whenever you're cutting mosaic tiles or any small pieces, you wanna make sure that the bottom is supported. Otherwise, it can be a little wobbly like what you can see on that corner piece. I just wanted to show you that for demonstration, but on future cuts, I'll be using a backer board for support. You'll see. And now that these stones are wet, you can see some of that color really start to pop. That's awesome. These next two pieces just need one edge cut, and I'm using some cement board as basically a zero clearance insert like on a table saw. This material is no problem for the diamond disc to cut, and now all the tile underneath are supported, even the small pieces on the edges. So far so good, and now for this last piece, we just need a little bit of this corner to fill out the end. And this cut really wouldn't be doable if I wasn't using that cement board as a backer piece. Another huge upside that you get from having this backer board is a reference line for lining up your mosaic tile. This is really convenient, especially on these kind of free form cuts where we're not referencing a straight edge. So now I'm starting to see the perimeter come together. It's looking nice. And I repeated those same steps to the edge pieces on the other side. And looking back on this footage, I didn't need to keep track of these tiny stones on the edge. The wall tiles are gonna be covering that. Using a backer board helps a ton for corner pieces like what I've got on this piece. There's a couple of intersections on some small stones and I'm able to just cut one piece and then spin it and I know that I'm right on the line that I wanna cut. Plus, everything's supported like I've mentioned already. Now it is not necessary to have a fancy tile saw like what I'm using. Especially for a small job like this, it'd be easy to get by with a diamond blade on an angle grinder. Just make sure you mask up because it is dusty. Honestly, for a small job like this shower floor, a diamond disc is perfect for the whole job. So don't think it's necessary to spend a ton on a tile saw. You can see though I cracked this small stone, so be careful, but I'll be able to replace that. Now I'll double check with my template. That seems pretty good so far. I didn't expect to run out of sheets, but I needed to use some off-cut material to take care of this last corner. I followed the same steps that I've already highlighted and that basically completes our perimeter cuts. Progress so far is going great. Now it's time to cut out the opening for the drain. I added some water to the surface of the tiles that we're cutting before I used my angle grinder with the same diamond disc to make these cuts. The water helped keep the dust down. I also think it helped the temperature stay lower because I didn't have any small pieces crack on me. I used a razor blade to separate just a couple of individual stones that are overlapping with the drain and I made sure to be really careful to keep my fingers away from the blade while I made these cuts. And so far, my square cutout is looking pretty square. One final check, and our drain is pretty much spot on. This looks really good to me, but I don't know what our margin for error actually is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a dry run, laying these pieces out on the shower floor, and that'll let me know if I need to make any more adjustments. My perimeter pieces were a killer fit. I just had to make a couple alterations to those small individual stones I had already cut. And with that, it's time to move on to installation. To attach our tile to the mortar bed, I'm gonna be using pretty standard thin set mortar. The only difference is this is white colored, and that's because I'll be following this up with white ground. 
Be sure to follow the mixing instructions on the bag. I was going for a thick pancake batter, and with Thin Set, once it's mixed, you'll let it set for about five or 10 minutes, and then mix it one more time before it's ready to use. All right, it's game time. I'll be using a quarter inch square notch trowel and these wedge spacers around the perimeter. Wish me luck. The first thing I did is use the flat side of my trowel to spread thin set over where my first row of tile is going to be. And once it's spread, I'll then use my square notches to create these grooves in the mortar. This will give the thin set room to squeeze and level as the tile gets placed. You don't wanna just butt this first piece up to the corner. You wanna use these spacers to make sure there's a little bit of gap that allows for a little bit of wiggle room as you install these pieces. And just a quick reminder, I'm not using spacers between my tile sheets, but make sure to use eighth inch or 16th inch spacers if your tile requires it, or you just want that look. Row two, here we go. I'm gonna try and lay these as flat as I can get it, and then plop it and give it a wiggle. You want to press down a little bit, but not a lot, because you don't want a ton of squeeze out. That'll cause a lot of cleanup later. And here I'm using cardboard, but you could also use a grout float to press down and make sure all of your tiles are level with each other. Of course, everything is sloping towards the drain, but we just want to make sure that we don't have any stones popping up. And here we're at our final row, and if our template is successful, all of these pieces should go down with no problems. And I'm going to tamp all these down, and this helps me feel if I've got any stones that are high. So as you can see, our template worked great for the perimeter. Now we just got a few individual stones around the drain and those went down with no problem as well. I'm really glad I went with this template method. I was able to cut everything in one go and then install it all in one swoop. And now I wanna clean this thin set off the face of the tile before it dries. I keep forgetting how cool this stone floor is gonna look when it's wet, the color really pops a ton. This needs to cure for 24 hours and then we'll be back to grout. But first, I wanna give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop for a custom website or online store, and now with Blueprint AI, that has never been easy. All you have to do is type in a little bit about the website you wanna create, and then Squarespace creates a custom template tailored to your brand or business. And from there, everything is fully customizable. With Squarespace's enhanced search engine optimization, customers can now find you even easier. And with Squarespace online stores, customers have tons of payment options. They can check out using credit card, Apple Pay, or PayPal. And now in eligible countries, customers can buy now and pay later using ClearPay and Afterpay. And with Squarespace's online courses, you can turn your knowledge into income. Squarespace has all the tools to build your course from scratch, and then you can set your paywall, whether that's a one-time fee or a recurring subscription charge. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds. And then when it's time to make your site live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain using Squarespace. As always, thanks to Squarespace for supporting modern builds content and you all for watching. Now let's finish up the shower floor. It is now time for grout. I'm using this product called Prism, and that's because it's good for tile butt joints all the way up to a half inch. I'll mix this up and give it five minutes, kind of like how I did the thin set earlier. You can get unsanded grout, but typically that's for small joints like up to an eighth of an inch. So you'll notice that any other grout is pretty sandy like this. You spread everything with a grout float. It's basically this thick rubber foam material with a trowel handle. And this basically pushes the material into all of the cracks around your tile, and it also squeegees the face of the tile to get it cleaned. I meant to use this during the installation to help press all the tiles down, I just couldn't find it. The important thing is to work the grout float in every direction to get it pushed into those grout lines, especially on irregular shaped tiles like these. That looks awesome. And now I'll use a wet sponge to clean the grout off the surface of these tiles. I'll wipe in a circular motion, and you can see how it's cleaning already. Just don't press down too hard. And then I'll wash my sponge in one bucket, which will be my dirty water. And then after I wring it out, I'll load it up with clean water. And that'll help me go through less water overall. Cleaning grout is the definition of rinse and repeat. You just wanna do a gradual cleaning. With each pass, it'll get cleaner and continue to look better. And for the tile that I'm using, I want a little bit of a recess in my grout lines, but you don't necessarily have to do that. The directions say to let this sit for three hours and come back with a cheesecloth to remove any haze on the surface of the tile. 
I bought this big roll last time I was at Home Depot and it should last for quite a while. This is also another good opportunity to do a once over on every tile to make sure you don't have any thin set on the face of any of them. If you do, you can use a clean chisel to scrape it off or a razor blade as well. Here I'm using an old Harbor Freight chisel to clean out the recess for my drain before screwing it back in. I also used it to get a good reveal on my grout line around the perimeter of the drain. And we are done. At this point, if you want or are required to, you can apply sealer to your grout and tile, but I don't need to, and I wanna keep that wet, dry difference in look, so I'm leaving it right here. In next episode, we're gonna be tiling the walls. So make sure and hit the subscribe and notification bell so you see that when it goes live. As always, I appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. I forgot to mention, it's Mike's first flip. Don't worry, I've got more red guard. Bye, everybody.